They say every day is for the thief, one day for the owner of the house. But ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission, has reversed the rule. It is now every day for the owner of the house. If you're involved in bribery, over-invoicing, or any shady deal, the day of reckoning has come. ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission, is watching you. If you're reported for any corrupt practice, you'll be investigated, prosecuted, and punished. Corruption is harmful to our nation. Join the campaign against it by reporting any corrupt practice to ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. Let me join hands with ICPC, make them better. Let's make Nigeria great again. ICPC, they want to. for corruption. Break the chain of corruption now. Don't give, don't take. This message is brought to you by ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. Hello and welcome to another edition of Corruption Must Go, ICPC's weekly television program. I am your host, Muruna Barnabas Atiai. The issue of illicit financial flows is at the forefront of global concerns. Nigeria and other countries in the African continent have suffered various forms of illicit financial flows through tax evasion, illegal export of foreign exchange, corrupt practices, exploitation, and other organized economic crimes. Recently, the ICPC organized a one-day hybrid sensitization workshop on the published guidelines for private sector response to illicit financial flows, vulnerabilities in Nigeria. Today on the program, we shall bring you details of the sensitization workshop. Do stay tuned for details. But first, Ruth Awadi is standing by to bring you anti-corruption stories. Over to you, Ruth. Welcome to this segment on anti-corruption stories. I am Ruth Awudi. The chairman of ICPC, Professor Bolaji Owasonye, SANOFR, has charged police officers of the commission not to get carried away by the prevalence of bad behavior in the society to be indisciplined. Professor Owasonye gave the charge while decorating two police officers, Messrs. Yusuf Umar and Abdullahi Mohammed, on succumbing to the commission who were recently promoted to the rank of Superintendent of Police. The ICPC boss stated that despite the police being derided and not appreciated enough, officers should not be discouraged in maintaining good conduct always. Professor Owasonye told the officers that rather flow with the bad tide, they should be the examples of positive difference in carrying out their duties. It's a, it's a great opportunity to always show that there are good people. For every bad person you find, there is a good person. The, 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 the question is, which one do you want to be? You know? um, the uniform is a trust and it's a responsibility. It is not to be debased or to be abused. I'm looking forward to you going forward, to you being further promoted without any scandals. And you have to learn to conduct and live within your means and your resources. 
It's a very tough thing to do in Nigeria, but the chicken has come on to roost. All those people who have built their castles in the air, they are going to see it come crashing down. And I will explain what I mean. People have been living above their means and their income. It's no longer sustainable. If you stole money and built a seven-bedroom house, it's going to become a shell before your very eyes. Because you will not be able to maintain it. When one side is leaking, you move to another room, you start leaking. You can't fix it. You can't fix it. When they post you somewhere and you marry another wife, you will pay the price. Because there is a cost for marrying another wife. Just stick with the one that you have now and pray that you can maintain your children. Keep it low. Okay? Some people just breed like rats all over the place and add to the problem, not only the own problem, the problem of society. You will pay the price. Okay? Usually it looks like you are getting away with it, but nobody is getting away with anything. It's just delay. Your result is coming. And you can see it from the example of Nigeria. So I like to encourage people who want to use um, the prevalence of bad behavior as an excuse for bad behavior. Why don't you choose to be the example that there's something different is possible? That's what I want to try. Wherever you are, you know, it doesn't matter who is watching, just be who you are. From the ICE citation, both officers joined the Nigeria Police Force in 2016 and were seconded to ICPC in 2018 and have proven to have never been found wanting on their job in ICPC. And from the Delta State Office, ICPC recently sensitized the top brass of the Delta State Command of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, on the role in the anti-corruption fight, the benefits of integrity, and the National Ethics and Integrity Policy, NEIP. Speaking during the sensitization session, the ICPC Delta State Resident Anti-Corruption Commissioner, Edit Ufort, implored the officers to imbibe and proselytize the core values of the NEIP as a sister agency, noting that the synergy between them goes way back. He, however, regretted that in spite of this relationship, ICPC has had to investigate and prosecute a number of NSCDC officers for sundry corruption offenses, which, according to him, was not desirable. Ufo therefore urged the officers to turn the tide and ensure that they also become partners of the Commission by upholding integrity and reporting corruption. Earlier, the State Commandant Suleiman Jimo had welcomed the ICPC officials to the sensitization session and urged the officers to internalize and put into practice what they were about to learn. One of the ICPC presenters and legal officer, Stella Chibuzo, who gave an overview of the ICPC law, emphasized the importance of complying with the anti-corruption laws and other government regulations. She ran through some of the offenses and provisions of the ICPC Act, noting that once they are violated and it is reported, the Commission would have no other option than to enforce them. Chibuzo also pleaded with the participants to be whistleblowers against corruption, assuring them that their identities will be protected when they make reports. That will be all on this segment. Corruption Must Go continues with Muna. Stay with us.
You're welcome back, and this is Corruption Must Go, ICPC's weekly television program. And our focus today is on the recently held sensitization workshop on the published guidelines for private sector response to illicit financial flows in Nigeria. As one of the countries most affected by IFFs, Nigeria, through the ICPC and other anti-graft agencies, has demonstrated strong commitment to curb illicit financial flows in various ways. To this end, ICPC, in collaboration with other stakeholders, developed guidelines for the codification of the private sector response to stemming IFFs in Nigeria. While delivering his welcome address at the sensitization workshop on the guidelines, the chairman of ICPC, Professor Bolaji Owasoye, ACN, decried how illicit financial flows drained the country's revenue and foreign reserves, saying that there was need to adopt diverse measures for Nigeria to get out of the traps of illicit financial flows. Take a listen. As has often been noted by economic experts in Nigeria, the problem of Nigeria is not the size of our budget, but with revenue generation and collection. Improved domestic resource mobilization is one of the key measures that has been advised by the Addis Ababa agenda. Prior to that decision, African states had postponed to a resolution of his ministers of finance, which was made in 2010, established the high level panel, otherwise known as the Tabon Becky panel on illicit financial flows from Africa. That panel was established in 2012. The report of the panel laid the foundation for this conversation and this much talk about illicit financial flows. The report of the panel was adopted by the heads of government at their 24th summit in 2015, also in Addis, in Ethiopia. One of the notable recommendations of the Becky panel is the critical urgency of measures to stop illicit financial flows from Africa in order to enable African nations to secure much needed capital required for development and to reverse the anomalous trend of Africa being a net creditor to the global north, yet global north by the quantum of capital outflows and yet remaining in a financial debt trap owed to the recipient of our outflows and multilateral financial institutions that are controlled by them. In other words, the Becky panel said that the evidence before it is that Africa is the one supporting the world with capital. But this same Africa is owing the people who are receiving the capital outflows from Africa. According to the Becky panel, Illicit financial flows happens through three sources. The criminal route, the corrupt route, and the commercial route. The biggest of these sources responsible for almost 70% of capital outflows is the commercial route, which happens by the unethical and illegal trade practices and operations of the private sector. The most implicated in this regard being tax evasion. Despite the unequivocal alarm sounded by the Inveki panel report and the great potential that full and diligent implementation of the recommendation holds for boosting national revenue and enhancing the ability of countries to enhance the prospect for improved livelihoods and sustainable development. The efforts to curb IFFs from Africa remain disparate, feeble, lacking focus and political will. Implicated in this condition is a lack of awareness and capacity on the part of public and private entities on how to respond to the challenges posed by IFFs. What ICPC has tried to do is to break the inertia and the non-response to the apparent issues raised by the Becky panel by taking definitive steps to deal with the issues. Nigeria, like many other African countries, is seriously fiscally challenged because of the growing need for domestic resources to meet urgent and critical national development programs 
and promises of government. And that is why we have the special advisor on revenue. It is his job to worry about how the government will get the revenue that it requires to deal with these issues. On his part, Dr. Adela Buzakios Adedeji noted with concerns that illicit financial flows have significantly eroded domestic revenues and hampered government's efforts to mobilize resources. Mr. Adedeji also commended ICPC saying the level of progress and successes so far recorded in the fight against IFFs were through the concerted efforts of the Commission. Let's hear him. Stemming illicit financial flows has recently topped global discussion, giving it negative impacts on global development agenda as well as the governance challenge it has generated through time. The illicit financial flows, unless checked, will continue to significantly erode domestic revenues, enable corruption, threaten economic stability and sustainability development, divert money from public priority as well as hamper government efforts to mobilize domestic resources and recover better in uh, recover better. In Nigeria and across the African continent, we continue to suffer various forms of IFFs, including tax evasion and other avid tax practices, the illegal export of foreign exchange, abusive transfer pricing, trade mispricing, misinvoicing of services, illegal exploitation, and other under invoicing of natural resources, organized crimes, and corruption. I know. Some level of progress and success have so far been recorded in the fight against IFF through concerted efforts of ICPC sensitization and capacity building of major players in various sectors of economy as well as citizenry on the mandates of this IFF. These efforts have yielded good results and benefit as nation through this robust engagement has brought identified linkages that enable IFF by the Lilibar circular issue by the federal government. While speaking on the private sector feedback on the published document, the Chief Compliance Officer and Company Secretary Owando PLC, Ayotola Jago, noted that the prevalence of illicit financial flows could be stemmed if there was an enabling environment, as well as strategic collaboration that would help to build trust between government and the private sector. Um, from a private sector feedback, reading through uh, the guidelines, like I said, in an ideal world, fantastic. But in the environment that we live in, in Nigeria, there are things that still need to be fixed. Um, I'm grateful for the ease of doing business, but we need to focus on an enabling environment, continue to build that enabling environment for business to be able to formalize and to thrive. Because without that enabling environment, you will find that a lot of people, particularly those who are involved in illicit financial flows, will continue to operate under the radar. The other thing that we need to look at is harmonization of laws. There are conflicts of laws and there are loopholes in our laws that allow for, I was saying to Soji earlier, there's a difference between tax efficiencies, tax avoidance, and tax evasion. There is no company, even in America, you have cases of Google, you have, they get picked up from time to time, who, there are whole countries, sovereign nations, whose GDP is, um, a large proportion of their GDP flows from their ability to attract companies because they're either zero tax jurisdictions or low tax jurisdictions. In a panel discussion session moderated by Mr. Sojia Pampa, the coordinator of the team of professionals that put together the draft guidelines for the private sector, stakeholders from the Compliance Institute of Nigeria, the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, Federal Inland Revenue Service, and Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria all gave their views on the best approach to adopt in driving the private sector's response to stemming illicit financial flows. What we've done with this project is um, 
going to talk to one major gap we have, especially in the financial services industry, which is uh, not talking to the ethics and conduct part of the, um, the work we do in the financial services industry. I think a lot has been done in the area of regulatory compliance, but not much has been done in the area of integrity compliance. And so what you will see, what this will do, uh, this project's outcome will do, and this project by ICPC will do, is that um, I, I believe the regulatory um, authorities in the financial services industry will now start paying a lot attention to the integrity compliance aspect of uh, the financial services industry. And um, we've seen that happen already. Um, the direction of some of the regulations have been paying much more attention to personal liability and um, encouraging the governance, uh, good governance practices. Uh, because I tell you, you can put all the rules in place. You can have the best experts in place. But if the tone at the top is not there, you will not achieve your objective of uh, ensuring that we have a, a, a system that can, will not encourage basic flows. The engagement that the FIU is doing, ongoing, is yielding very good results because our stakeholders are beginning to understand the receipts and what is expected of them. Up to the, uh, uh, the free trade zones, they are also mobilizing and organizing themselves in a way that they will collect beneficial ownership data and be able to make those data uh, work and interact with each other and make it accessible to the public in a way that those data will be useful for both law enforcement and private sector uh, rating and assessment. I appreciate what ICPC has done and I think this is a fantastic new initiative. But I think it's very important that it's sustained so that it will be, you know, it will be impactful. And to sustain this, I would suggest that ICPC should set up a technical help desk. Okay, so you talked about uh, three frameworks, the prevention framework, detection, and the response framework. And probably it may be necessary to develop reports around these frameworks, this framework, and to request for reports from various um, relevant stakeholders. That way, we'll be able to do what Mr. Patterson has suggested, track so that we can monitor and ensure that we know where we are two years down the line, three years down the line. These are people that you bring in through other means, most especially through enforcement, through intelligence data that you gather. And what are intelligence data? We get all this data from all these institutions that we house data on various corporate activity or transactions, either local or foreign. And some of them we get from ICPC, we get from EFCC, we get from NFI, all these institutions that are empower to gather information or data on corporate or individual and that embark on transaction, whether legitimate or illegitimate. The workshop was attended by representatives of key agencies of government, civil society organizations, and private sector stakeholders in the country. Participants expressed strong optimism that the workshop as well as the published guidelines would enhance greater awareness on IFFs increase compliance by the private sector, and provide more reliable data on types and manner of IFFs in Nigeria. That's our package for today. Don't forget to report all acts of corruption, including corruption as it relates to IFFs to ICPC toll-free on 0800-2255-4272 or email us on info at icpc.gov. Dot ng. And follow us on our social media platforms displayed on your screen. That will be all on this edition of Corruption Must Go. See you again same time next week. Bye for now.